It's a controversial and volatile stop in Detroit. Today is Sunday, November 22nd, 2020, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. It has been quite a week. Have I said that before? Uh, yes, pretty much every week of 2020. This week marked a new phase of measures announced by Governor Whitmer aimed at slowing the very worrisome increases in COVID cases and hospitalizations. The announcement came last Sunday night, which meant business owners were given all of about 48 hours to figure their way around a new set of orders. It means more people out of work right as we head into the holiday season. In fact, across the country, food banks are being pushed to their limits. And here's just a quick thought, that if you have been lucky enough not to be severely hurt by the pandemic, you might spare a few dollars on the meals that others are gonna be struggling to put on the table this week and perhaps for the foreseeable future. Now, it also has implications for one of Detroit's most cherished traditions. We already knew America's Thanksgiving parade was gonna be a different affair this year. A little later on, we'll talk about what you can expect from us coming up on Thanksgiving morning. And we also saw a week that gave us a little whiplash at the Wayne County Board of Canvassers, a body that seldom gets the kind of national attention it saw this week, expected to certify the county's vote. The two Republican board members changed their minds and voted no, but then after a very contentious and at times angry public comment period, changed their votes back to yes. A day and a conversation with the president later, they wanted to rescind those votes, though there really apparently isn't any way for them to do that. It all added up to more fuel on the fires of division across America. Is there any way for us to get on the same page, be it for the election or the pandemic or the myriad other issues facing the nation? This morning, we'll convene a group that no doubt has been thinking about that. Members of the Michigan congressional delegation, they're up first today on Flashpoint. You know, I always feel fortunate when I get a, a meeting together of at least part of the Michigan congressional delegation, and we've got that today. I'm very happy to have with us uh, incoming Congresswoman from the 10th District. Congratulations again going out to Republican uh, Lisa McLean there on the upper left-hand side. Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Dingell from the 12th District, and at the bottom of the screen from the 9th Congressional District, uh, Democrat Andy Levin. I will note Republican Pete Meyer, who won the election to succeed Justin Amash in the 3rd District, was scheduled to be with us, but he has canceled. So so, uh, Ms. McLean, you'll, you'll have to hold forth for the grand old party. And I would like to start with you. Uh, on uh, Friday, the man you're replacing, Paul Mitchell, co-authored an op-ed in the Detroit News with Alyssa Slotkin. And the two of them were basically urging the president to begin the transition to the Biden presidency. Do you agree with that? Um, I, here's what I agree with, is I think the process and democracy is critical. And I think we're in the middle of a pandemic. We have more absentee ballots than we've ever had before. Sure. And I think the process, we can do a heck of a lot better on the process that we're doing right now. So I think it's important to get it right because when we get it right, both sides, regardless who wins, but when we get it right, it's easier for both sides to move on and go, go forward in a positive fashion as opposed to a negative fashion. And I really think right now what we need is we need to make sure that the process and we focus on the process to get it better and to get it right so we can move forward as a country. Well, when you say uh, whoever wins, does that suggest that you're not sure who has won this election? Yes, I think we need to make sure that we have counted every legal vote and that and that every legal vote is transparent and has been counted accurately. 150,000 votes or so, though, separate the two in Michigan. Does that, do you feel like there's something in play there? I don't know. That's why we have to go through the process. Mm. That's why we have due process, and that's why we have rules and procedures to make sure that everything is transparent. And I think if you go back to Florida in 2000, um, we had one state that had a lot of discrepancies. Today, we have a lot more than one state that have a lot of discrepancies. So it's, it, it's, um, it's November, it's almost Thanksgiving. Um, we still have some time and I think it's important to pause and just make sure we have it right. Let me let uh, Congresswoman yeah. Dingell jump in on that. Uh, uh, Congresswoman, you were, um, uh, I know, pretty upset by what you saw at the Wayne County Board of Canvassers uh, this past week, but uh, what are your thoughts about uh, Ms. McLean's comments? Well, first of all, I wanna welcome her to the delegation and say we look forward to 
working with her, and we are all committed to working together as we begin uh, the new Congress for the people of Michigan. I, I, I am going to, here's what my concerns are right now, Devin. I think every vote needs to be counted, and we need to, every Republican vote, every Democrat vote, every person that voted, this vote needs to be counted. But we also, what's happening now, I fear, is that we, people are deliberately trying to extend the certification period out. They're trying to undermine people's confidence in the results of this election, attack the integrity of the results, and undermine people's belief in our democracy and are attacking the fundamental pillars of our democracy. That's what now has me concerned. And I think that I hope somebody will do a 101 in what happens when ballots are counted. And we keep hearing about huge discrepancies. Well, here's a reality. It's called balancing. So when you're counting absentee ballot votes, a envelope comes in that doesn't have a ballot inside of it, but it was registered as coming in. Livonia had more off, numbers were more off than the city of Detroit's were. Right. But nobody raised an issue. As a fact, one of the Wayne County canvassers was willing to certify the cities outside of Detroit. Uh, and by the way, this happens in every city across the country, every town across the country. But people need to understand it because when you just hear what you're hearing, you're like, oh my God, something's wrong. I dug into it, but not a lot of people care the nitty gritty of it as much as some of us do. And that's what I think matters. Uh, Congressman Levin, uh, Lisa McLean is right about one thing. We, we, there, the process can still play out here for a while without um, uh, 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 us bumping up against a debt. We've got weeks actually still to go before the Electoral College meets, for example. Do you believe we're already at a crisis uh, point uh, with, for instance, uh, Joe Biden not being able to get uh, daily uh, intelligence briefings, things like that? Or are we not at a crisis point yet and everybody needs to relax? Well, I think everybody should relax. And in that spirit, let me join in welcoming uh, Lisa McLean. I look forward to working with her. We share Macomb County, so it's, right. it's going to be great uh, to work with you, Lisa. But, Devin, let me be very clear about this. What's happening now is not the hurly-burly of politics or making sure the process works or some you know, partisan tussling. This is outside of the bounds of democracy. Joe Biden won Michigan by 14 times what Donald Trump won Michigan by in 2016. There's no question about it. There's no, uh, nothing in dispute. All of President Trump's lawsuits have fallen completely fact. There's flat. There's not one scintilla of actual evidence that there's a problem. And so uh, they, the, the, the Wayne County Board of Canvassers should have certified it was just, it's not a, something in their discretion or judgment. They were, they, should have, they were legally required to certify. The, the transition should have begun on the Saturday when it was clear that Joe Biden, what is that, uh, two, two weeks ago at least. So, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's outside of the bounds of a democracy. And also, it's dangerous for the people of the United States. We're in the middle of a pandemic, as Representative-elect McLean said. Um, we have had 252,000 Americans die. Uh, we're having uh, more cases every day than in the spring by far. This is a crisis. The president and the president-elect should be working together to move our country forward, not having the president uh, just lost in his fantasies about maintaining power against the will of the voters of the United States. In fact, Ms. McLean, that's what I want to get to next. Then it, we, We're still seeing, obviously, so much division over the election. I'm wondering, wondering how in the world we get together on something now like the pandemic. Uh, I was uh, in your district last weekend at the Walmart up in Sandusky, and I would say uh, somewhere between a fourth and a third of the people in the Walmart were not wearing masks. Um, I, I, I'm curious as to what you think we need to do now moving forward as a nation to try to come together. We've obviously got a lot of bitterness uh, and division vision in the state of Michigan uh, over the governor's new orders. How do we move forward and get everybody on the same page? I think the number one thing we need to do to move forward is we need to remember that we are all Americans. We are all on the same team. We all live in the greatest nation there is, and that's America. And that's evidenced by every day how many people are trying to get into this country versus how many people are trying to get out. 
we're all Americans, we're all on the same team. How we come together is we have a belief in people. We have a belief in each other and we start from a positive premise. We start from a premise as to what is right. The easiest thing that we can do is pick apart what is wrong, but it's very difficult for people to come together on what is right. So let's start with, let's look at positively, what have we done right? I believe in the power of people. Look at how quickly we have moved from the start of this pandemic to now. We have better treatments. Pretty soon we're gonna have, rather quickly, I, I think we're gonna have a vaccine, which is unheard of. And that's because people got together, they collaborated and they innovated. And they focused on what can we do together to move this. Uh, did, did our video lock up there just a bit or is she? Oh, Lisa, sorry, go ahead. Keep, uh, I, I, can we agree that a mask is right? Oh, we just lost her for a second. Hopefully we'll be able to get her back here uh, with her link. But let me let me let uh, Debbie Dingle then weigh in then on uh, how do we move forward, uh, given that there's so much disagreement over how, how, uh, over the response so far uh, to the pandemic? We need a national COVID plan. We need somebody who who is going to lead. I have no idea how the wearing of masks became so political in this country. I th Lisa was very articulate in saying we are Americans, we're the United States of America, and we're the strongest when we're united. But we haven't had uh, a national plan, and I just, I simply don't understand how it became so partisan. Hope is around the corner, a vaccine has been developed, but right now the CDC is telling us to not travel for the holidays with all three of us having to get on a plane to go home still. So, uh, but to only spend it with your immediate pod, your immediate family, we all have to pull together to stop community spread right now so that there is the hope of the vaccine down the road in a few months. Uh, we've got Lisa McLean back with us. Lisa, we lost you just as I was asking you. You were, you were talking about doing uh, what we can agree on is right. Can we not agree that a mask is right? So I'm a, I'm a big believer in individual freedoms, and I'm a big believer in if you feel comfortable, it is in the best interest for you to wear a mask and protect yourself and protect others. But I want to be clear on the individual freedoms and to follow. Everyone talks about following the experts, which I think is critical. We need to follow the experts. But the issue is we haven't been in this situation before. So to, uh, to me, let's, let, let's again pause and let's do what's right and in the best interest of, of, of ourselves, our, our family, our friends, and, and, and our country. And I believe in the word and. I, be, I believe we can do a lot more with and than we can do for. Uh, let me let uh, Devin, Congressman Levin weigh in here. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a mask, Devin. It's a, it's a two side, two cloth on both sides. It's scientifically proven that it protects other people very well and it protects me to some extent. That's not opinion, that's science. We, it's not nothing about my freedom. I cherish my freedoms as much as anybody. But when we found out that seatbelts save lives, we mandated them. When we found out that airbags save lives, we made the auto companies put airbags in them. I don't, it's not a restriction of my freedom to put on my gosh darn seatbelt. And we are talking about an epidemic where we're unnecessarily losing tens of thousands of Americans kids, middle-aged people, old folks. And let's talk about our country being the greatest country. I think of my dad collecting gum wrappers in World War II to get a little tin foil and having victory gardens. It was shared sacrifice. Devin, it's not a very big sacrifice for me to wear a mask to, in the interest of my fellow Americans. Sign me up. I've got just a short time left and I wanted to go around to each of you and ask you what you think is something that you're afraid is not be, uh, much attention is, is not getting much attention right now while we're focused on uh, the pandemic while we're focused on fighting over the election. Is there something that uh, you want to take into this new term that you're afraid we're not spending any time on Congresswoman Dingell, let me start with you. Uh, there's so many issues I fear that we're not paying attention to. We've got to pay more attention to the environment. Hurricanes and 
wildfires, et cetera, have gotten worse. But I'm in the more immediate, quite frankly, Devin. The budget to fund the government expires December 11th. Yeah. And I sincerely hope we won't let the government shut down in the middle of a pandemic. Congressman Levin, you. Yes, I mean, I would also, I have such big goals for the future, but we urgently need to pass relief for the American people uh, during the COVID pandemic for unemployed people, checks for every family, help for local governments, help for our educators. That's the only way that we'll both save lives and be able to reopen our economy. So that's number one on my list. And finally, Congresswoman-elect Lisa McLean, what do you want to take with you to Washington to focus on right now that isn't getting that attention? We need to have a focus of the big picture of jobs and the economy. We're so hyper-focused right now on, on COVID, which is, which is real. I respect COVID. I don't fear COVID. And I believe in the American people. And I believe in the American people can figure out how to be safe and stay safe and figure out how to have a prosperous economy. I believe we can do both. The power of the human mind is second to none. And we don't take that into consideration when we take a look at things. Look um, at how far we've come. So jobs in the economy is clearly at the top of my list. I'm so glad we were able to get all of you together. Congratulations to all of you on your electoral victories uh, and the upcoming new term. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. We'll take a quick break. We'll bring uh, Nolan Finley and Stephen Henderson in next on Flashpoint on Local 4. This year, more than any other, are you certain you have the right Medicare plan? HAP is here, helping our neighbors navigate Medicare. Offering Medicare plans with $0 monthly premiums, $0 primary care, and $0 on most preventative vaccines. Collaborating with doctors and hospitals to create plans for today's world, with more bang for your buck. Up to $400 annually for things like over-the-counter medicines or a blood pressure cuff dental, vision, and hearing coverage. A travel benefit so you can travel the U.S. with in-network coverage and 24-7 telehealth. Looking for more value? HAP is here. Talk to one of our Medicare specialists to set up a no-cost, personalized consultation and request your free HAP Medicare planning guide. Face the future with confidence. See how HAP is here for you. For Guiding Harvest is a lifesaver for a mother like myself with children and having so many snacks and lunches to make. The food from For Guiding Harvest make me feel better in school. Because these children around this community really look for For Guiding Harvest. And I thank For Guiding Harvest for helping me and my family out. For Guiding Harvest needs your support to help families in need. We need your help today. More now on the week that was and what's ahead with the duo that is spearheaded the Civility Project. Great time to keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of uh, incivil things said this past week. But let's talk to uh, Stephen Henderson of WDET in Detroit today and Nolan Finley of the Detroit News. Stephen, I'd like to start with you because I want to talk about this uh, Wayne County uh, canvassing board uh, situation. I uh, was listening to your program the morning after uh, that, uh, that meeting and uh, you had very strong feelings about what had happened. Well, I mean, this just unmasked the effort to, to try to overturn the election as a plot to disenfranchise black voters. Uh, uh, Monica Palmer, one of the members of the, of the board, sat there and said it. Uh, she was fine to certify uh, the other Wayne County votes, but she wanted to, to get rid of Detroit. And that, I think, uh, gets right to the heart of, of the effort, not just in Michigan, but nationwide, that the Republican Party's strategy uh, is to reduce black popular black participation uh, in balloting, uh, and, and they will do it by any means necessary, uh, including the illegitimate means that they've used here. Uh, it's not acceptable, and and we're not going to. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to debate there. Uh, that is an assault on black voters. It's an assault on black people. Nolan, the defense that they used was that uh, just like the primary, we saw this uh, problem of some precincts, a lot of precincts being out of balance, uh, unlike, but they, they certified the vote in the primary. Why this was right. different, and nobody has explained, uh, but uh, what was your take on it? 
Well, that's standard operating procedure in Wayne County and Detroit. Um, they never get the vote completely right. But Donald Isn't Trump. Isn't that a problem? Lose. Of course, it's a problem. We should be getting the right the vote uh, right everywhere. It's a there's a degree of racism involved when Detroit voters line up to vote and the votes don't get counted because of incompetence. But Donald Trump didn't lose this election in Wayne County. Uh, he lost this election in Oakland County, mm. where he got 50,000 fewer votes than he got in 2016. In Kent County, where he got nearly 40,000 fewer votes than he got the last time. Uh, what happened in Wayne County wouldn't have un wouldn't undo his defeat. And, and you know, the, the focus on Wayne County, I think, is is misplaced. Uh, Stephen, uh, we do need to finally figure because it was almost the exact same margin of precincts being out of balance uh, it, back to uh, the, the, the primary, which means that these districts supposedly aren't recountable if it comes to that. I mean, we do need to fix that, right? Well, I mean, they've been working on fixing it, and that was why the state was involved in the election in Detroit this time was to help with that. But to fix it long term, uh, this is a resource problem. Uh, the mm. clerk's office in Detroit is underfunded. And whatever you think of the clerk, Janice Winfrey, and the job that she's done, you know, the, the best clerk in the world couldn't run this uh, in a way that you wouldn't have these problems. We've uh, been talking about this for a long time. They don't fix uh, it. I, I think Chris Thomas, uh, who was brought in, of course, to help with this, uh, would agree with you on that front. Uh, let's move to this uh, very strange uh, odyssey involving uh, Mike Shirky and Lee Chatfield. Uh, a lot of people believing that they should not have taken the invitation to go to the White House. They both argued, I think, w why would we not accept an invitation to talk to the president? Uh, they emerged and said that they had uh, uh, appealed for more COVID aid, um, that they didn't, hadn't seen anything that would change the Michigan result. Uh, Nolan, was this much ado about not very much, or uh, were they were people rightfully indignant about this uh, invitation being sent out in the first place? Well, I think the former is true. There's nothing the legislature under Michigan law. There's no role for the legislature here. They cannot um, overturn uh, the the electors, the electoral college electors. They cannot replace the electoral college electors. There's nothing under law they can do. And Mike Shirky and Lee Chapel both said several days ago, we are not going to meddle in this election, and they're not because they don't have an opportunity. Even if they wanted to, the law doesn't allow it. They went and said they talked about COVID-19. Who knows what they talked about? Who knows what the president wanted them to do? But their statement afterwards saying, we've seen nothing that's going to change the result of the election. I trust that. And so, hmm. yeah, I think, I, and I also believe Hey, they got the, the invitation to say, hey, we're going to the White House, guys. Let's <laughs> let's go. You know, it, it was there were so many odd trappings around this. Stephen, your thoughts. So, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't think that there was anything that could have been done. But I think that they should have thought a little harder about being part of the show here. And that was part of the aim that the president had was to to co-opt leadership, political leadership in the state into this assault on voters in, uh, in, in Detroit. And uh, as the Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader, they don't represent their districts and their parties only. They represent the whole state. And so I think there might have been, even if they decided to go, uh, saying up front uh, that that was the case and that they were there to fight for voters. Uh, in this state might have made it look a little less uh, like they were lick spittles uh, jumping at the, mm. the, the president's beck and call. Um, but, but you know, as Nolan points out, there's really not much they can do here. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it's all show uh, to get people worked up. Not much I can do here either because I got to get to a break. But uh, Stephen and Nolan, <laughs> thanks so much for the time, guys. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon. Back with more in just a minute on Flashpoint. There are over 500 reasons to shop Black Friday at Gardner White. Reason number 314. Save on huge Black Friday doorbusters. Reclining sofas, $4.95. Dining sets, $3.95. Bar carts, $1.55. Going on now at Gardner White. At Beaumont, we're always ready for change. So when COVID-19 changed the way our community needed us, we created change to serve them even better. Change that made safer return to work programs with on-site screenings possible. Change that let us pivot quickly and care for the most COVID-19 patients in all of Michigan. Because the one thing that will never change is our commitment to you.
Star Lincoln is celebrating 50 years thanks to you. The Star Treatment continues on elevating your personalized luxury experience. Shop in person or online with complimentary remote delivery because making life effortless is what Star's about. Don't just shop for luxury, experience it at the iconic Star Lincoln in Southfield. Conveniently located 12 Mile and Telegraph. Get the Star Treatment at the one and only Star Lincoln in Southfield. There are over 500 reasons to shop Black Friday at Gardner White. Reason number 299, more free. Free AirPods, free laptops, free 70-inch TVs, and free delivery. Going on now at Gardner White. All right, before we go, a quick update and invitation for Thanksgiving morning. We knew America's Thanksgiving parade was going to be different. Uh, late last week, health officials decided even the small television zone we were setting up on Woodward Avenue wasn't going to fit into the new pandemic restrictions. So the parade company and we at Local 4 have been hard at work to celebrate the tradition that has been a part of so many Michigan lives for decades and decades. It, of course, won't be the classic Woodward extravaganza surrounded by all those smiling, bundled up faces. But we will be bringing you the new floats, new performances, and a lot of the fixtures you've come to expect from the holiday. In many ways, the most important one is that you and I and Kimberly Gill and Rhonda Walker and Everard Cassamy will all be together for a warm, nostalgic, festive morning. Get started. Special edition Local 4 News today at 6 a.m., live in the D at 8, followed by our, our presentation of the parade at 9. I hope we'll see you then.